I would never have cash with me. Any money, whether it's in the bank, whether it's in my uh, mobile phone, it had to go to betting first. It was like I had to sanitize it. And the moment it went to the betting platforms, I would lose it. Hi, um, I'm Crispus Kimaru, a recovering alcoholic. We might have met on this platform or on other platforms while I was talking about uh, alcoholism, but uh, I didn't mention there is um, something more to it that is even worse than uh, any other addiction that anyone can go through. While I dealt with my alcoholism, I started uh, betting, sports betting or gambling and it started as fun and it became worse. It was around 2017, when 2016, 2017. Um, so even after I stopped drinking, um, I thought this was an alternative way of um, having fun. And eventually, by the time I was done with it, I had lost uh, hundreds of thousands of, of uh, shillings. And um, I had strained my relationship with my family, the rest of the family, and uh, with my wife, up to a point we were almost parting. And um, that's what I want to talk about today, sports betting or gambling in general, and uh, gab uh, gambling addiction, and how bad it can be. So many people are betting and with the hope of making money. And while it starts as fun and as something um, positive, it ends up uh, becoming a bottomless pit where you throw in money, you never get anything. As they say, the house always wins. And that's what I want to emphasize. You'll never win. You'll never, unless you get out of it early, you are going to destroy your life. You are going to destroy so much. Your relationships, your marriage, uh, your job. For a long time, um, betting or gambling wasn't a, a common man's issue in the country. You could hear about casinos, but how many have ever been to a casino? Maybe very few in the country. But over the last few years, maybe six, seven years, uh, betting sites are all over. Betting platforms are on um, national radio, television. Every other two minutes on television, you have to see a, a betting or a gambling advert. And they are so glamorous. They promise you you are going to win millions and you are going to become the next uh, jackpot winner. And of course, a few people have won, but very few, maybe less than 10. And uh, now that's the biggest problem because everyone who is betting is hoping to become that big, uh, that next big winner. But it never happens. We can't all win. Uh, and that's the biggest problem now. Convincing people to stop betting, uh, it's hard uh, because you are seeing people winning. The adverts are promising you that you're going to win. When you listen to radio, you are hearing people calling in saying that or being called that they have won. And uh, we all believe we are going to win. And now convincing people that um, this can lead into depression, it can lead to stress, it can lead to mental health issues, it's not easy. And unless we start having this conversation, this is going to become a big problem. So many people have committed suicide in the country. So many people have lost their jobs. So many people have lost their businesses. And uh, until we start now talking about it, like we have talked about alcoholism, like we have talked about other issues, other uh, forms of addictions, it's going to become a big problem. If you want to stop drinking, if you want to stop uh, maybe to deal with alcoholism, we are always told to find uh, an alternative. Uh, where you can drive your energies into. Now for me, I chose gambling, I chose betting, sports betting. Of course, it was the craze and of course it was promising me money. And after losing so much over the 17 years I struggled with alcoholism, I knew this was the way to maybe recover everything in, in a week or in a day. So um, I started with small amounts, 10 shillings, 50 shillings, 20 shillings. And then um, I was advised, if you want to win, if you want to recover, then um, you have to call to add or to stake higher amounts. And of course, I was doing my writing, I was doing some business here and there. So the money was there. 
I started with 100, then I, I recognized maybe, yeah, if you stake more, you there's a chance of winning more. So I started with, the, I continued with 500. Remember, I'm still a recovering. Um, those were the early days of my recovery. So 500, 1,000 shillings. Um, and actually at that time I was making good money because I had started importing stuff from China and then I would sell them on my Facebook page and I was, I was uh, doing well. So I didn't think losing a thousand was a big deal. But then it, uh, I progressed to 2000 and of course after losing, I would chase the loss. And then uh, it went to 5000, then I started even placing uh, bets of uh, 10,000 or even more. And no one was noting because I always had money in the account. Um, my fiance wouldn't note because uh, I would do it in hiding. It progressed to a point where I would wake up at night, late into the night, when maybe uh, she wasn't watching and I would place the bets. And uh, if I lost the money, I would not, I would never confess to anyone. Actually, I had sworn never to tell anyone about my betting until maybe uh, way later when it, co it caught up with me. That's when my wife recognized the issue and I had to confess. Uh, it is a... Uh, it, uh, it's so bad because no one can, no one notices it. No one, uh, and like alcoholism where everyone would see me drunk and everyone would try talking to me. In this case, I was just dying alone. I would lose money, I would borrow money. Uh, at one time, I, would, uh, I started uh, borrowing even from um, the uh, loan apps because, of course, I, I was depleting the, the savings I had. So I started borrowing from loan apps. I started borrowing from uh, family. And I, no one suspected what was happening because um, I was so good at hiding it. And uh, that's how I uh, sank deeper into the hole. From 2015, 2016, 2017, betting was betting had become a, a craze all over. All the young people around me were doing it. I was working from a cyber, and I would see people, young guys, or even some wazes, come to the cyber early in the morning before even reporting to work. Um, they would place bets. And I didn't have an interest. Then I started asking myself, what is happening? And uh, they would come in the evening to check the bets. And they would say they have won. Some would say they have lost, but they would place other bets waiting for the next day. Um, I was always online. So I started checking out. And that's how I got into, uh, I started learning. Of course, this is a, uh, it's a digital-based thing. So I started learning how to go about it. I did my research. Uh, I started betting that way. But even on radio, even on TV, the betting platforms, the gambling sites were all over. They were advertising, they were promising. Then some people started winning millions and millions. And I knew I was going to be the next one and I was going to recover everything. And I wanted to impress everyone, of course. I was always thinking about the big car I would buy and how much I would uh, impress my family and how it would be a happy ending to my alcoholism. Uh, uh, struggle but uh, it was uh, it was getting worse and uh, other than that kind of uh, betting the sports betting the media was uh, was all awash with the the lotteries um, the, the pay bill numbers send this amount send 50 shillings the lotteries send 50 shillings you will in 10,000 in an hour they were all over everyone was being promised money and everyone was talking about money or uh, winning from uh, the towns to the villages, uh, even our grandmothers in the villages were talking about winning, uh, you know, from the radio stations. The vernacular radio stations were promising money and it had become, we, we were being termed as a gambling nation from 2017 coming uh, forward. And um, that's the time now I was getting deeper into it because the, uh, the, the, the gambling sites were, uh, were increasing in number. The stakes were even being lowered and uh, the winnings were even uh, increasing. We were being promised from 20 million, it became uh, 300 million. I think somebody won 300 million and uh, we were all happy as gamblers that we, we would be the next. <laughs> but it was never going to happen. Um, that's how easy it was. Now, the smartphone... Um, revolution came came about now everyone had uh, apps 
the betting sites, all of them had uh, sites. Even the lotteries on, on radio, they had sites. Uh, they had apps. So you could bet while, while the, on the go. You could bet while commuting. You could bet when even driving. Because as Kenyans, we can do anything. Even when working. Uh, you'd find uh, fundis at Amujengo uh, during the, uh, their breaks. They would have those uh, cutouts from the newspaper. The, the last page of the newspaper, they had photocopies. Actually, that became another side, uh, another hassle for uh, newspaper sellers. They would photocopy the last page uh, of the of the of the uh, papers they were selling, and then they would sell them maybe at five bob to people. So you'd go and buy that copy of uh, of the bets that are that are that are available for the day, okay, from different betting companies, and then you'd go to your phone and send the bets. It was it was. Um, I think it was happening while no one was watching. The government came to know about it way later, maybe five years, maybe five years later, because they started their campaigns about three years ago or two years ago. Um, by that time, we were already a gambling nation, and I was deep in it. I was even uh, sharing uh, uh, bets or uh, advice on how to bet, but I was losing. Remember, no one, no one accepts that they are losing. I talk to any gambler, even now, even Kenny Roger will tell you, you have to lose. Um, but no one will ever tell you they are, they are deep in the hole. And that's how the situation was. And that's how the situation is for those who are still in it. And that's why I'm here, because I want to talk to them. I want to tell them to face the reality. I think the, the investors of these companies, uh, most of them came from Europe. They had a lot of money. So they were campaigning. On TV, we were seeing this guy uh, being driven in uh, a limousine and, you know, he was building a house for his grandfather and his father and his girlfriend and everyone. And, you know, he was, he was flying to Greece and other countries and that is the life we wanted. Yeah, we were betting with the, using 20 shillings and 50 shillings, but he told us he won uh, from 100 shillings bet and we knew we were going to be that guy. Uh, but it doesn't happen that way. It never happened that way. We went deeper and deeper, but the companies continued advertising. So however much you wanted to pull yourself out, you'd remember that guy who won 300 million or the other guy, the other lady who won, I think, uh, 100 and something million. And you, you'd say, God, it would, we were even bringing in God into the, into the mix. God, it would be me next. Because uh, I think in the Bible, there is nowhere we are told not to bet, I think. So we were using that argument. This is not like stealing. This, this betting, this investing. Actually, the young guys in colleges call, call it uh, investing. Kwa Muhindi. I don't know. The first company was owned by, uh, uh, I think, a Muhindi. So we used to call him Muhindi. Even right now, people, uh, when they, they bet, they say, Kupatia Muhindi Pesa. So, um... We, we believed that we would win. We, we would be the next winners. You know, when you start out, there's that uh, optimism or that hope that you're going to win. And I don't know what happens because you win small, uh, little amounts. You win a thousand. You place a hundred, you win a thousand. Um, uh, the more you continue, uh, you start losing more. But you see, you, you won. At the, at the beginning, you won some money. So there's still this uh, uh, belief in your mind that you're going to win big. If I won a thousand, then it's possible for me to win 10,000. So you continue. Uh, you don't want to think about the losses a lot. But after every loss, you have to bet. There's what you call um, speed, speed betting. That is after a loss, you want to bet very fast so that you can cover the pain. Uh, and and you know you boost the hope in your in your in your brain that I'm going to win. Yeah, I have lost. I don't want to think about the loss, so I have covered it. I'm going to win next. The, that dopamine effect, that dopamine, the, the neurotransmitter that is released in your brain, you want to feel it again, and then you continue. Even if you have one loss or two losses or ten losses, you are um, running for that that high feeling, and that's how you continue. Uh, doing things to get the money. Sometimes um, you even invest all the rent. Sometimes you invest uh, even f uh, maybe money for food, uh, the money that you'd have used for food, thinking that maybe this 100 will give me 500 and then I'll have 400 uh, profit. 
at one time my house was almost uh, locked cuz i was sitting on the deposit as we say in, in nairobi i was sitting on the deposit and um i had to go and beg the the agent actually i had i had the uh, i had uh, the money but i had used it i had uh, placed a bet i lost it all i didn't tell anyone uh, by that time i had started borrowing so much money i wasn't focusing on my business anymore i was doing some um, branding also t-shirt branding and all that and if i found an uh, a client i would first of all use that deposit any deposit they give me i would use it to bet so i would delay the orders the clients would get mad uh, i would borrow money i remember there was a time i borrowed uh, 120 from my sister kate my sister has gone through a lot of stuff and yeah i owe her a lot i borrowed that money and uh, most of it didn't even go to the order that i was placing it went to a bet then the worst thing is uh, when the client started asking for those diaries because i was branding some diaries i ended up buying poor quality poor quality materials or diaries and uh, that, that's what i supplied um, somewhere in riverside and uh, i was almost beaten beaten with the same diaries because that that guy that lady was so angry so i started losing my business that way eventually i stopped because uh, i couldn't even focus i was always anxious i was always uh, uh, i would get panic attacks you know thinking about the games that were going on thinking about where to get the next even even 50 shillings just to place the bets if anyone was um, if anything happened and i got some money like 10000 i would the first thing would be uh, how can i get money from this 10000 through betting so i would place it in a in a in in in, in the betting site and mostly i would lose it uh, eventually my family some of my family members started realizing i wasn't doing well and they even reported to my parents but i i went to my parents i convinced them business is not good actually they gave me a hundred thousand shillings um by the time i was leaving home i was shaking because i i was so anxious i was even telling them no no i, I want to go and deposit this money in the bank um in in town you know but I, I just wanted to get somewhere and you know start betting and i spread that money ten, almost 80000 um let me say in in 3 days i didn't have the 100000 shillings um and of course um no one knew because you know it wasn't advertised anywhere that i got money from my parents uh things got worse um my fiance at that time um we even parted but the moment she walked out of the door, that's the time I realized, oh, there's a fridge in this house, there's a TV, there's a sofa set, and these are assets. This is money I can invest in betting. And that's how I started with the fridge. Mm, you know, I would always tell myself, if I sell this fridge, I can, I'm going to win millions. And I'm going to buy even 10 fridges for this, for my own and even for my family. So... I, I sold my stereo music system i sold i sold almost everything <laughs> and i started uh, sleeping on the floor i was living in a in a uh, utawala um a 15000 house and then when i was left sleeping on the floor i realized ah, i don't i don't even need all this house all this space that's how i moved to a single uh, a single uh, is it called a not a bed sitter a single room where no one no one even knew me so i would sleep on the floor and i was comfortable doing that but i i was i still had my laptop i still continued betting and the problem is no one ever knew that i was in so much trouble i was dying alone and at one point i even almost resorted into drinking because i was so stressed and i was thinking um i can't move forward with my life yeah i was telling god yes you you took this cup of uh, alcoholism from me but now <laughs> this is even worse no one knows i have so much trouble i remember one time in 2019 uh, around november 
I got uh, 52,000 from Achama. Um, I owed my sister a lot of money and we were in the same Chama. And she expected that out of the 52,000, at least I would give her 10,000. She called the next day at around 1 p.m. And I didn't want to tell her that I didn't even have a coin. The money was sent the previous day. The treasurer to the Chama is her friend, her best friend. So she knew I had some money. So she waited, thinking that I would send the money. By lunchtime the next day, I didn't even have a coin. Uh, I, first of all, um, maybe deposited 10,000. I lost the 10,000, um, continued that way. I would bet throughout the night, because now I was staying alone at that time. I would bet throughout the night. And it happens for most of the gamblers. It's only that we don't talk about these things. You see, you start with the, uh, the common games, like football. It happens, uh, most of the games are played on Wednesday, oh, sorry, on Saturdays and Sundays. But you see, that's not enough for you. You want to continue playing. So you start looking for games that are played on Mondays, Tuesdays, or throughout the week. That's how you start looking for other leagues. Other than maybe the ones in England, you start looking for other leagues from other countries, South Korea, Japan, uh, uh, Australia. So you have to wake up even from 2 a.m. for you to play a game in Mexico or for you to find games in Mexico or other places like Venezuela. You don't even know where the, the countries are, but there's a game there. Then sometimes there's no football, maybe, and then you have to go to tennis. You don't even know how a tennis ball looks like. But then you move to boxing. Then you move to dog races. At one time I was even saying, I wish uh, they had the cow races. At least I would understand cows better because <laughs> I know cows from my village. I would tell this is a and this would win. But um, then there were virtual games. These companies have everything just to hook you. And then they are even giving you bonuses. After betting about 30,000 in a month, they are giving you 150 shillings in a, in a bonus. They even tell you this money is not, you can't withdraw this money, you have to bet. And they know the moment you start betting, from that moment you are hooked. So if you have an iron box there, you will just go and sell it. And no one will ever notice, that's the worst part. No one will ever notice that you have a problem. At that time, um, I remember I was in another cousin's chama, and sometimes they would say they want to come because I was the chairman and they would say they want to come over to my place and i didn't want to tell them that i had even uh, relocated from that place they knew so i would keep uh, deferring the meetings uh, until i got maybe somewhere respectable uh, to stay it was so bad it was so bad that i just wish anyone who is go going through it would be strong enough to open up because it can make you sell everything that you have. I've seen people who are close to me who have lost millions and they don't want to talk about it. They keep chasing the losses, thinking that they can recover what they have won. When I started this debate on uh, uh, betting on my Twitter, uh, on my timeline, Everyone was joking about how, no, this is fun, this is investment. But there are guys who came up and said they have lost uh, marriages, they have lost their children, they have lost their businesses. One guy said um, they lost a very big uh, M-Pesa shop that was doing so well. But immediately the money was deposited by a customer. They would take the money, before, uh, they would withdraw the money and eventually they had to run away from even their families. So many people are going through, uh, but because of the shame and the guilt, they just keep quiet. You suffer alone, and you're wondering why people are so stressed. It's because they are trying these things. A guy in Moranga said um, he bought a cow for his mom. Uh, uh, his mother bought uh, or sold the cow after a few months. And when the guy went home and asked the mother, where is my cow, where is our cow? Um, they fought about it and eventually uh, the mom confessed crying that she sold the cow, 32,000 shillings, uh, all of it went into those lotteries, 50 shillings, 50 shillings, because 
you are told the more you bet, the more you send, the more you send, the more you are going to win. The cow went like that. 32,000 shillings. The guy was devastated. Not because of the mom, not because of what uh, his mom did, but because of um, because of you know the fact that the adverts had caused that. If there were no adverts, if uh, people are not being promised uh, heaven and then getting hell, it would not have happened. Uh, last year, even the government said they were going to stop those adverts, those lotteries and uh, such kind of betting, but nothing happened. So many people in college, again, uh, Kenyatta University committed suicide after betting 70,000. I remember it was on, the, on a World Cup game, Germany against war team. He lost, he committed suicide because there was nothing else to do. There are so many others who have committed suicide over betting because you feel like that's it, that's the end of the road. There's nothing else you can do. No one will listen to you. If you go and tell your family, I have a problem with the, I'm a compulsive uh, gambler, or I have this addiction, they will laugh at you. They will tell you it's your money, you're gambling, but they will never, just like the alcohol addiction and other drug, uh, other addictions, no one will understand. But this is worse because you are looking smart, you're going to work, you're working in a corporate, no one will know. I went to uh, a financial company somewhere and um, the guys were working on their laptops and from where I was seated I could see one, one was betting. For all that time we were waiting, I even told the, the other customer, that guy is betting on a, because I could even see he was trying to maybe win some money. So you can tell that is in an office. So how many people right now as you speak are in company or offices or PCs or laptops betting? trying to win out of the 50 shillings that, yeah. So uh, you lost 10,000 over the weekend betting. So the first thing you do on Monday, if you're able to uh, maybe borrow from somewhere, you place the bet trying to recover the losses. It happened uh, with me. I opened so many loan apps, you see. Everyone who is betting will tell you they're either on, uh, they have borrowed from the major companies, uh, they are being called at night. I used to get so many calls. I told my wife, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I would get threats. Wewe tunajua kwako, lipa hii pesa, ukikopa hii pesa, kwani uliku unakopa ufanya nini? I almost told them, I was borrowing to bet, and I lost the bet, so please understand. But they, I couldn't. So at one time I even stopped, I was just advised to stop taking the calls. I had gone so deep into those uh, loan apps. Some of them are even loan sharks, actually. They would even tell you to uh, capture your, uh, your, you know, uh, a selfie, even with the ID, you know. And then after promising you a thousand, they would give you 200 shillings. After going through all that and filling so many forms online, I had so many betting uh, apps. And then I would bet from one platform, then open another one because they are promising a bonus or something free. When I open, I would register. I had registered for all those betting companies. It became so bad that, uh, you see, by that time I had uh, settled with my current wife. And during the dating, sometimes I would just go blank or I would just disappear. Because, you know, I had promised maybe to go out with her for coffee. I knew I had money, I would be paid in the evening, but by tomorrow, for, uh, by the time of our coffee date, the next day, I would have nothing. So just switch off my phone and disappear. I didn't tell her. She discovered way later. The anxiety, it affected uh, sexual activities, everything, everything, the moods. Let me tell you, uh, the moods that you get, the mood uh, disorders from you know, that hope that you're going to win, and then uh, the disappointment after losing. You are always on highs and lows, highs and lows, and mostly they are lows. So you're even attending an, a function, uh, maybe it's a wedding, everyone is happy, you're just on your phone, checking whether, you know, Manchester is winning, then Manchester doesn't score, and you're expecting the score, and then you're moody, everyone is happy. Maybe even your kids are wondering what is happening and call, what's up, dad, what's up? And you, you can't tell them. And your wife, you have to lie to your wife, ah, Nikazi, it's about work. 
I have lost a client. You know, because you know they are going to ask about the money. So you have to keep lying. The first lie leads to another lie, to another lie. The suicidal thoughts came back after a long time. Um, you know, after struggling with alcoholism, I had those suicidal thoughts. And of course, I even attempted suicide once, but I, I was able to manage it after stopping drinking. But they came back because of this anxiety, the moods and uh, uh, the highs and lows. They came back and I started thinking about it. And I actually told my wife, you know what? I'm feeling like I'm done. I'm done with life. Uh, at that time, I, was sti I had still not confessed to her. But she was worried. I think she even talked to my mother. And she was told uh, it's just because of the alcoholism. He's in recovery, so he'd become better. But I, I didn't. I didn't uh, improve. I was getting worse because of um, the betting. Um, it was la way later that um, we resolved it, that I was able to confess and we were able to deal with it. The worst bit about confessing to having a gambling problem is that you'll have to talk about the amounts that you lost. It's the most shameful thing because the biggest amount I won while betting was about 20, 25,000. Uh, you know, in one sitting, or from maybe a combination of games. But the amount I lost, I was quantifying it. We were trying to maybe average uh, the amount with my wife some other time, and it was coming to over 2 million. Because I would lose over 50, Oh, fifty to sixty thousand per month, and uh, that was from twenty eighteen, a part of twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen, the entire year, twenty twenty, most of the year during Corona. So we, we were saying it was over two million that I lost just like that, and no one would notice because I was borrowing from John to pay Paul, and you know, I would never have cash with me. Any money, whether it's in the bank, whether it's in my uh, mobile phone, it had to go to betting first. It was like I had to sanitize it. And the moment it went to the betting platforms, I would lose it. So either I would borrow from my wife, borrow from my brother, borrow from... So at any time I had some personal debt from the family. And then from the mobile loans, I had borrowed so much that I didn't, I even told my mother one day, I don't know how I'll ever get from this. I think I, I, I can't. But that is uh, until I stopped, uh, until I was able to stop. And that's when I realized maybe it's possible to get out of it. Because I was in a hole, I was digging deeper. I was working with a very good guy at that time. I didn't have my own writing account. Um, the guy would even accept to uh, lend me money in advance. So like on Monday, I would tell him I have a chama somewhere, so give me like 15,000. Then he would give me the money on Sunday or Monday. Uh, and then that means any work that I would do that week would have been prepared for. But I would lose that money, maybe in two days. So I would be working demotivated, knowing that I don't have anything to earn on, maybe by by the weekend. By that time, my businesses, the business uh, ideas that I had, uh, the, the imports, uh, digital marketing, selling on Facebook, everything had stopped. Uh, at one point, um, we needed money. And uh, I told my wife I didn't have money. And I was pushing her to borrow money from her parents. And uh, we were somewhere seated and, and I noted she wanted to cry. Actually, she started to cry. And um, I, I asked her what the problem was. And she told me when we got married, um, her dad had asked whether I was stable, whether we would be stable. and. She was very confident. You know, the way uh, you get married into a family and 
maybe there's that resistance because maybe they, they don't know what to do. And she fought for the marriage and here I was now pushing her to borrow from maybe her parents. And um, not that I wasn't making money. She knew she could see them maybe empesa messages every other time but she didn't know where the money was going and i think she brought up um that's when she brought up the issue of maybe uh do you have another family do you have a girlfriend do you have somewhere you take your money uh, that's when i realized uh, i had to i had to speak out and um, I sat her down and I broke broke it down what happens with gambling and I gave her examples of sometimes maybe in the past where she had given me money and I had used the money to bet trying to maybe win more and maybe recover maybe some other losses. And then at the end of it all, I would lose it. And um, I showed her my MPESA statements. And the MPESA statements were good. They were reading good money and all of it. Uh, she could see the, the betting companies from morning, sometimes at 2 a.m. Because I would wake up at 2 a.m., uh, pretend that I'm going to do some writing, and I would be betting throughout. Many times I would not go to work. I would, I would just stay in the, uh, in the house, pretending to be working, but I would be betting. And uh, the isolation was working perfectly for me as a gambler, because I would bet and bet and bet, and uh, while seated alone, I would uh, borrow from everyone, from her, from everyone. Now, that's the time I told her, now I have a problem and I need help. I have money, I'm making money. I'm making money from my hobby, which is writing, but I have nothing. I have pushed you to the edge and I know you are, that's why you are crying. And I don't want us to ever borrow money again from anyone. And I need your help. She's the best financial manager I've ever seen. So she just requested for one thing. She told me she will take over my finances. I'll work, she'll manage my money. Of course, I'm a man, I was worried. But knowing the pain I've been through alone, fighting alone, my, fighting my demons alone, I just hugged her and I told her, that's it. And I felt relieved. She told me to ignore all those calls from the uh, loan companies uh, because there was nothing I could do. We didn't have the money to pay. Something I didn't say, uh, from 2018, 2017, 2018, I had to change my number. I had to buy another line and throw away the old line because I had borrowed so much from uh, those loan companies. So I got the number I'm using now, that's a new number, and I got it to escape. But I didn't change my habit. I continued with the betting, thinking now that I would recover what I had lost from the time I stopped drinking and maybe what I had lost for those 17 years I was drinking. So in a way, my betting was still related to maybe my alcoholism. I was trying so much to recover everything. And the moment I, uh, she talked to me and she told me, stop fighting for your restoration. Your God is going to restore you. you you can't, betting cannot restore everything that you lost. And whatever you have lost since uh, for those five, uh, for those uh, maybe four years, just forget about it. That's what I did. And um, we started gradually, uh, meaning all my money now would come through her, through her hands. And that's how I, I managed because it was so painful at the beginning because I wanted to bet. I wanted to bet. Even if you are to win five shillings, you know, 
just see that message or that color that you know that reflects that you have won on the betting platform you feel good and uh, now you re uh, you reinject the five shillings hoping that it will become 20 20 will become 100 100 will become a million that's how the cycle continues the moment we closed those betting sites i felt some uh, relief like i've never felt and uh, within a month or so, things started stabilizing once more. With her in the seat, and she is still in the seat even right now, she is managing our finances even. And I am not ashamed of saying that because I know I have a problem and if I get uh, money lying just, uh, you know, loosely, I don't want to risk that. So I let her do the finances. She is the best financial manager I know, so she does that. And maybe that's, that's the, the route I would uh, advise people to take, those who are struggling with the, uh, the same gambling addiction. Even if they are not giving over their finances, they have to be accountable to someone. If you have bills, for instance, that you're supposed to pay, uh, maybe you can have your sister or your brother who is more accountable checking on you. Yeah? Tell them, my pay comes on 28th. Please call me on 27th. Tell me. Like with any addiction, when you start uh, the recovery journey, there is always that uh, risk of uh, relapse. And um, for, like I said, with gambling, it's it's so it's a slippery one because no one notices. So um, what I what I did, I started talking about it even on uh, you know trying to get a support network. Um, unlike uh, unlike uh, with alcohol, where we have a, a alcoholic anonymous. We don't have support groups yet, but I linked to other uh, sites in the UK where you can uh, you can uh, learn about how to support yourself or um, treating yourself, or, you know, uh, curing yourself from the gambling. There's there's so much that you can learn. For instance, um, stopping that isolation, stopping trying always to be uh, number one, trying to be accountable to someone, uh, avoiding that uh, isolation. Um, and then um, stop thinking about stopping thinking about the losses that you have had over the past. And then, if it's possible, join a support group, whether on WhatsApp, whether on Telegram, whether on uh, uh, Twitter, any platform that you can join. You talk to other people about um, your recovery journey, or you share what you are struggling with. That has been. Uh, um, my route, the one that I've used. Of course, there are extreme cases where people who gamble also have other issues like um, mental disorders, mood disorders, anxiety. Some, sometimes in that case, they might have to uh, go the, uh, the treatment way where they get uh, medications for, like uh, antidepressants for them to deal with their anxiety. Um, you see, most addictions and mental um, addictions are part of the mental disorders, and sometimes it's a complex uh, mixture. You have anxiety, the anxiety, and then you start gambling or you start uh, drinking. It becomes a toxic relationship between those two. So it's always good if you uh, if it has taken you to the extremes. It's always good to seek medical attention. Um, when I started. Uh, sharing on my uh, my timeline on my social platforms, I got a lot of uh, resistance. It was like a, a campaign against me when I started talking about betting uh, addiction. I was uh, told to focus on alcoholism. gambling. And then. Um, the conversation turned with time. People started saying, you know what, there's something we have not been talking about. And that's the time people started coming out, talking about their, uh, their situations or their experiences, the experiences of their loved ones who have lost everything. Some have lost big jobs and they are in the village now, staying with their mothers. Because they even sold the investments, the land. I, I know one who sold his plot down here um, in uh, on Kagundo Road, and he went back home in Nyeri. Actually, um, he even there was even some development of the land where he wanted to settle with his family. But now he's in the village doing nothing. He lost it all, and he hasn't stopped. He hasn't managed to stop. He's still hoping that betting will maybe recover everything. 
when we start uh, talking about it that way, even if we don't have the numbers, at least we, we are creating awareness about it. And uh, when the more people become aware of the dangers, or even of the uh, 10 bob that they are trying to uh, place bets on or with, then uh, it becomes better. More people, will, uh, more people will learn from our experiences that this, this is a risky game. If uh, you are gambling and uh, maybe if you have won, whether you have won, whether you have lost, I want you to remember the house never loses. So if you have won your 300 million, if you have won your 50,000 or even 1,000, just take your money and go. Don't go back. The moment you go back, remember the house always wins and the house will recoup its profits. And that's why it doesn't give, uh, the betting companies don't give this, uh, uh, this money every other time. It's like it's choreographed in a way where you have a winner every other six months. So if you have your money, don't look back. That was your luck. Don't go back. Just because you never know the moment where it you will uh, cross that border from just a gambler into a problem gambler or an addict. And the moment you become an addict, even the property you bought with the with the wins, with the hundred million, you you will sell everything. Remember. What started as fun can become a disease. And uh, that is what happened to some of us. Okay? Uh, and because you don't want to try, of course you don't want to lose your 100 million. That is your like, Ioni Bahati Ako. Whether you have called that uh, uh, radio station and you have won the 100,000, do something with it and forget about the gambling. Invest the money, forget about the gambling. Because it can become a disease. It's not easy to own up to someone and tell them, I've been losing so much money. You look like a fool. You look like an idiot. They ask you, you mean you lost 10,000, you lost 50,000, you lost 100,000, and you still continued? And then you tell them yes. But that will be the, uh, the most freeing thing. It will be um, you know, emancipating for you. It will free you from that uh, uh, enslavement. The moment I owned up, the moment I was able to face my wife and tell her, this is the situation. This is the reason I have been stressing you so much. This is the reason I have been so angry. This is the reason I have been moody. This is the reason I have been waking up at night. This is the reason I'm not able to even focus on my work. The moment I told her that, that's the moment my healing started. That's the moment my recovery started. And from that moment, I enjoyed peace. I enjoyed peace in my, uh, in my life. My blood pressure was high. My doctor always used to ask me, what is troubling you? I would not say. But then when we, started, we went back, eh, after maybe a month or so, my pressure was down. Because my dad has pressure, high BP. My mom also has high BP issues. So I was saying maybe it's hereditary. But deep down I knew I was always um, having these highs and lows and um, anxiety all the time, panic attacks. And any time I would check, any time maybe uh, my wife was not around and maybe I would check on my phone, I would find I have lost. And then the mood would change. Maybe you are even out uh, having fun, traveling somewhere on a trip, and then I would keep checking my phone any time they are not around and I would find losses. And um, that all that changed and she can attest to that. And uh, we have now um, a better relationship we have uh, a better bond and I can see my money working for me and that's the best thing. I don't live in suspense. I used to live in suspense like, you know, I was hanging on a thread. My name is Caroline Jerry Kidai and I am married to Chris. Uh, he's a lovely father and a very good husband to me. Uh, most of the things that come with his Getting off the, uh, the hook of betting and gambling is a lot of peace. It has really helped me in so many ways. As much as it was good for him, it was also good for us as a family. We have been able to do and accomplish things that we, sh we wouldn't have accomplished did he continue with his betting. You see, um, when we got married, we... I hadn't been married before, so 
and your bills were on me and everything else. I did it independent on me. Now here I am married and I expect everything done for me apart from me. <laughs> everything means everything, basically everything. Then I realized things were not as easy as I thought. But looking at it, I, I knew Chris was making money. Oh, but where the money was going was the issue. At one point, no, at that moment when he said that, he now had to confess. We had planned, we had planned on uh, taking a facility to buy land. Then uh, we actually saw many parcels of land. Then at one point he told me, I can't do this anymore. But that was not the agreement. Then I realized that something was wrong. That time, uh, a message popped from his phone, and I saw it was about betting. We had spoken about betting previously, and he told me he had stopped. So here is, I think, Mozabet or something like that. And this is a message from a betting company, and this guy hasn't stopped betting. And uh, of course, I was not happy because I knew this is the Mpango Akando, it's the girlfriend that takes away the money. But oh, when he when he told me now he's ready to quit, he really wants to stop. I knew this was going to be the beginning or the end of the troubles that had been there. The, the girlfriend was finally going to go away. So we had to do it tactically. And uh, the first thing is, he told me, I want us to open a joint account. And I told him, no, we are not doing a joint account. Because again, that would maybe mean my money and his money getting together and him betting on <laughs> our money. So when he told me what he basically means by me controlling his finances was he gets the money, but I have the control. It became easier. We're able to pay bills on time. We don't quarrel. We don't have that side girlfriend that takes away the money. The money is well planned. The money goes to paying off bills. The money goes to investments. And the best thing is that I'm a Christian and I love God. And when the Bible speaks about healing, healing, we only think about malaria, typhoid, I don't know, some. But this is an issue that needed healing. The Bible is actually very specific in the book of James. I think James chapter 5. The Bible says that confess your sins so that you may be healed. Confess that activity that you are doing. In the way of confessing, you are... Uh, you're pouring out your heart to somebody. And when you pour out, when you confess, there's that inner peace. That is what happened to Chris. I didn't even tell him, like, sit down and tell me what you've done. It came from him. He confessed, told me, this is what I've been doing. And I would like us to do it differently. I would like us to do it this way from today. What I know is that what he does makes more money than even the formal employment that I'm in. But without proper management, that money can go to a mess. I am happy so much has changed. He's even able to take care of us as his family. He's able to take care of what a man or the head of a family should. I wouldn't say 100%, but from the time I met Chris till now, Atasura. <laughs> there is that inner peace that makes him look, look brighter. He should show you his photos. <laughs> he was dark. This guy was dark. <laughs> there is that happiness that there is the inner glow. I'm proud of him as a husband, as a father. He's, he's a good man. I'm proud that his money goes to use. I am happy that his emotions are stable. I'm happy that we stay at peace. 
uh, when we started, we'd quarrel about everything, everything, basically everything. And maybe I was not on the wrong, but because there is a trigger, he had to quarrel at every maybe suggestion. Today, if we have something that we are doing, be it even where children are going to go to school, how much we are paying for the fee, such, we agree. Tells me we are going to pay amount A for firstborn, amount B for secondborn. So that by the time it gets to end month, we will have completed the fee or something. Before it wouldn't be so. Before, we basically wouldn't agree on anything. So there is that inner peace. I'm also at peace. Uh, I'm at peace because of his peace. And uh, the fact that so much has changed. I didn't meet him an alcoholic. So the alcoholic part is the stories that he gives me. But the betting part, I know a bit of it. And I'm happy that he's even able to, to accomplish most of his dreams. For those people that have people struggling with any kind of addiction, any kind, there is always a comfort in supporting your, your partner. Remember, if, if this partner, even maybe your brother or, or sister, your sibling, if your partner fails, you also fail. Then there is also the fact that um, we, Chris and I, believe in God. We believe in a God that restores. We believe in a God that doesn't keep grudges. We believe in a God that the Bible records that his mercies are new every morning. So the grace that was sufficient for us yesterday, we have more grace today. Let us sincerely love the people that God has gifted us with, uh, be it your husband, be it your wife, your sibling. Because the moment this person goes away from your life, that's the moment you realize that this and this person was important to me. I wish I listened more. I wish I, I, was, uh, I was keen on the words, the spoken and the unspoken. Be truthful to your partner. Confess for healing. And most of all, trust in God. Well, I used to live like a slave. You, you were pretending to everyone, you know, smiling, but deep down, you are just wondering what is happening to my bets. I am free of that and that's the best feeling. You know that freedom, we are like, ah, yes. I don't have to keep watching my laptop, I don't have to keep watching my phone. I see guys maybe, uh, you know, even working, they are always tense. The tension, that anxiety, it's the worst feeling. My mental health is better, I'm able to do everything better, I'm in control of my life and um, yeah, I'm happy. My wife is happy. Our kids are happy. And that's all I can ask for.